Uh, welcome to GBTA Georgia's uh, final education day session. Uh, hopefully you've been able to turn it, tune into each of them. Um, I think we've had a great month of educational content. Um, we're excited today to have Allison Nunes, Director of Global Events with LinkedIn, and she is going to talk to us about the, what, excuse me, her topic will be rocking your profile and the leverage and leveraging the power of LinkedIn. That's a mouthful, Allison. Um, we're gonna not do a whole lot of uh, pre-introductions or anything like that, uh, chapter updates. I wanna make sure that we give Allison uh, the complete time that she needs to run through a presentation and get to all the questions that I'm assuming that we're gonna have following her presentation. Uh, just a reminder, please mute your, uh, your, mute your mics. Uh, and also, if you have questions for Allison, please use the chat feature. Kim Kearns will be monitoring the chats and will ask questions as appropriate. So with that, I will turn it over to Kim for our uh, speaker introduction. Kim, it's Thank you. you. Thank you, Dwight. Um, and it gives me great pleasure today to welcome everyone to the last of the Education Month um, sessions that we have and to have the opportunity to, to introduce you to not only a, um, a business colleague, but someone who I consider a very good friend, Allison and I uh, actually had the opportunity to work together during her BCD travel days. So now Allison is the Director of Global Events for LinkedIn and she's been with them since 2013. So I'm not even going to, um, to, to say the title of the presentation anymore because I'll stumble over it as well. Um, <laughs> however, Allison does have 20 plus years of experience in the travel meetings, event marketing and hospitality industry. And she's a frequent global traveler, fitness enthusiast and a financial wellness advocate. All that to say, that's the bio that I received on Allison. If you really want to get to know Allison, I would say go to her LinkedIn profile. I mean, gosh, talk about a good example, which good thing, right, Allison? So <laughs> high, high energy, detail oriented, results uh, driven. And what was really cool about her profile is when it says advocate and champion for helping our members leverage LinkedIn to create economic opportunity and tell their unique professional story. So that's why you're all tuned in here today. So with that, Allison, I'm turning it over to you. Awesome, thank you, Kim, and thank you, Joy. So happy to be with everybody today. Um, as Kim mentioned, I'm Allison Nunes. I've been with LinkedIn for over seven years. And as time goes by, I just become more and more passionate about our vision and our mission. And our vision is what drives us every day. It's our dream as a company. And LinkedIn's vision is to create economic opportunity for every member of the global workforce. So in addition to my day job of managing global events at LinkedIn, I'm also a workshop ambassador for LinkedIn's Rock Your Profile program. And we designed this program to help our members and our customers create a great profile that highlights your skills, your experience, your accomplishments, and tell your professional story. So I'm excited to share some of those best practices with you today to get your profile looking great. Uh, as well as discuss uh, using other areas of LinkedIn. So our mission and value proposition at LinkedIn is really to connect you to opportunity. So you'll have to decide what that means for you as it's different for everyone. It could mean getting more customers and growing your business. It could mean building your personal brand and professional voice, finding that next job, professional advancement, career pivot. Whatever you're in it for, we're in it together. And LinkedIn is really a large community to help you get where you wanna go. So let's look at how we're gonna spend our time together today. So I'll give you a little bit about LinkedIn, what our ecosystem looks like today. We'll dig into your profile. I'll go through each segment and uh, share some best practices. We'll talk about your network and maybe some strategy behind that, customizing your news feed so that it's relevant for you. Uh, wanting you to engage on LinkedIn more, whether it's a, po a post, publish an article, using our learning platform to, to build new skills. And then towards the end, I'll, I'll share some uh, job searching tools and best practices that might be helpful for you today. We have time for Q&A, but as Kim mentioned and Dwight mentioned, just you know, post something in the chat. They may stop me along the way, and that's okay too. 
but let's just dig in a little bit to get to know LinkedIn. And you know, we've really grown over the years, maybe since you first started your profile. Um, but what we're doing, we're working every day to improve the platform to make it more useful and relevant to our members. So let's look at some of the data behind our insights. So LinkedIn today is about 700 million members in over 200 countries and territories. 75% of our membership is outside of the US. Uh, LinkedIn is available in 24 languages and we are growing at a rate of three members per second. Uh, more than 55 million companies represented. The majority do have a LinkedIn page, um, but LinkedIn also focuses on freelance and gig workers who can be searched based on their field of expertise. Um, it was just really important for us to make sure these workers that are self-employed, anyone that has a side hustle, also get access to opportunity. Uh, schools and universities, we have over 90,000 schools and universities listed on LinkedIn. Each university has its own page. You can view and access alumni from those pages. You can even search alumni that have your same degree, see what type of work they're doing today. Um, so remember that alumni can be a resource for students, but also for anyone. So I would consider them an extended part of your network and reach out if you need anything. Most people more than willing to help. So anyone that has students at home or you know, high school or college students, we encourage students to start using LinkedIn at the age of 16 while in high school, start building their profile, adding a relevant work experience, education, any skills to get them started. So skills, we have over 36 skills listed on LinkedIn. And did you know you can also conduct skill assessments on LinkedIn and when you pass, your profile can be updated and LinkedIn will validate those skills that you know they're accurate and which helps in the hiring process or anything just to kind of improve your profile. These skills fall under technical, business, creative, soft skills. So something you may wanna consider uh, if you haven't done any skill assessments. Millions of jobs on LinkedIn, opportunities for frontline and hourly workers to very senior professionals. So chances are, if it's an open job, it can be found on LinkedIn. And as I mentioned towards the end of the presentation, I'm gonna discuss some job searching best practices and highlight some of our tools that uh, will be helpful for you today. So let's focus on you and dig into your profile. So your LinkedIn profile is really a digital portfolio that represents you and tells your professional story. It's your first impression when people view it. If you've applied for a job, if you're doing business with someone, you always wanna be your authentic self and show some personality and create something that's visually interesting that highlights your skills and accomplishments. And the most important thing I say is to make it complete. So many people just kind of have a shell of it, but there's no content in there. So you're only doing yourself a disservice. Um, but one note I wanted to say about your profile um, is that your profile on LinkedIn is about you. It's not about the company that you're currently working for. Um, I review many profiles and I notice many really position their profile much to market the company they're working for and you shouldn't do that. You need to find the right balance highlight the great things about your company, but remember this space is to focus on you. You can do both. I just want you to remember that and view it with that lens that your profile is your story. Your company has a LinkedIn page to tell theirs. So let's start with your photo. We want you to have one, uh, one that truly represents you. Doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be a super professional headshot. You can you know, even use a selfie or something from your phone. LinkedIn now has editing tools to crop and use filters. You know, we just want you to have something current uh, with good lighting. I say no sunglasses, and I've seen lately people wearing masks and photo. No need uh, for that. So uh, you can edit your photos in the mobile app or on the desktop version, and also make sure the photo is just of you, not you and your partner, not you and your family members, not you holding a big fish, you know, unless you're a professional fisherman. But um, since we are a members first organization, you can control who sees your photo. Do you want everyone to see it? Is it just your first connections? So you can choose a few different options in the settings and privacy area that we'll talk about a little bit later. So next, we wanna make sure you add in your industry. It is one of the areas in your profile that um, shows up in search and searches. There's a huge drop down menu of options to choose from. Pick something you most identify with or an industry that you're trying to transition to. So. This is an area um, that recruiter searches as well. Uh, it's one of the fields in the top section of your profile. Also wanted to talk about location. So 
some people, you know, you when you put your location, you can put your zip code and it may, um, you know, tag your specific city. If you're living in a small suburb of a larger, a larger metropolitan area, I always say put that metropolitan area, the bigger space. So in, in your case, many of you, you know, Atlanta metropolitan area, I wouldn't want you to put, you know, something, a small suburb. Um, sometimes today, what people are doing, removing that zip code altogether, if you're focusing on remote opportunities only, or that you don't, uh, it doesn't matter what city you're in, you could remove that zip code and just put your country only. You could just say United States. So something to consider. Um, one reason I say about the larger metropolitan area instead of your small tiny town that you may live in tied to that zip code, I would never want a recruiter to look at your profile and go, oh, they live you know, in so-and-so and they would never want to make this commute here. You don't want someone else making that decision for you. So identify yourself with the larger metropolitan area or a country if you want to just be kind of focused on uh, remote work. But editing your profile in general is very easy to navigate, very user-friendly. You need to be in your profile to do it. Uh, you can't be logged into somebody else's LinkedIn and try to edit your own. You, and then you just look for the little pencils in each segment uh, or from the top view of your profile. Very easy to do. So next, I want to talk about your summary. Um, I believe your summary is the most important part of your profile. This is your about section. Um, if someone goes to your profile for 10 seconds, this is where their eyes go first. This is your elevator pitch. So I should be able to read your summary get a sense of who you are, what your focus is. This is also an area to show a little personality. We want you to be your authentic self and you can be less formal than maybe you would on a resume. So the other thing we say about your summary, don't write it in the third person. That sounds like someone else wrote it for you and it's just an old way of doing things and not really relevant or authentic today. Um, so highlight some skills, uh, unique experience, shares what, you know, something that drives you. This is just a free form area for you to summarize who you are if we went to your profile and only viewed this section. Don't make it too long, but have enough substance that showcases uh, what the message that you're trying to get across. Also, this is a great area to list some transferable skills that you may wanna highlight if your particular experience maybe leads the viewer in a different direction. So summary, really, really important. Next is your experience. So this is the detail under the jobs that you have listed. So this is an area that I find most people definitely do not have complete. They have the job title, they have the company, but they have no detail listed on what they did or what they were responsible, responsible for. We don't know it just from your job title. So detail it out for every relevant job that you have on LinkedIn. We also want you to write it in more of a short paragraph form and not bullets. It just reads better that way. Um, be sure to highlight special skills, accomplishments, how you made an impact, anything unique. Did you work in another country? Create some special campaigns. Uh, any projects outside your regular role that you were a part of. Um, also be succinct in your writing. Longer is not better. People will not read it. So focus on the primary things and try to get that across. Um, but really important to have some detail under every job you have listed. If you have five, but you have detail under two, go back, add it to the rest. Also, if you worked for a small company or a startup that people may not be familiar with, include a sentence or two um, about that company just to provide a little context as well. Um, that way they kind of understand. So again, make sure um, that you have some detail under all of the jobs that you have listed. Um, and in the, this section, I always say too, in case you're wondering, um, or have done this, no, don't attach your resume to your LinkedIn profile. It's not a thing. So rich media, uh, we want you to add rich media to your profile. Uh, this could be anything from a photo to a video, a presentation, other content. It doesn't necessarily have to be content that's authored by you. You can add different things, you know, segmented under each of the roles or in your summary section. We also have um, LinkedIn's kind of always improving your profile. You'll see it under your main section, it's called featured, and you can pin certain videos or presentations or photos. And this is also sort of where any activity that you have on posts will also uh, tie back to your profile. So um, 
again, this is just an area to make your profile more visually interesting. Instead of just plain text, it will keep someone interested and want to learn more. Also, I want to make sure you update the banner header at the top of your profile. Don't leave it on that default blue or green that is there. It's super easy to edit. Uh, and for most photos, LinkedIn will try to resize it and pop it in. It could be anything that represents you uh, that you want to showcase, just update it. Uh, you can see some options here how you know people like their profile to look. Some things a little more personal, some things a little more business, maybe it's a favorite destination. You know, try some options, see how they look. And you can easily change or delete it if you don't like what you know, you're trying out. It's just very impactful on that first impression when someone lands on your profile, sees a nice image of you, um, you know, your smiling photo, and then a nice uh, a banner header. And I recommend that you do this in your desktop version as opposed to the mobile app. It's definitely optimized in desktop uh, to edit. Next, let's talk about a little bit of volunteer experience. So adding volunteer experience is a great way to round out your professional identity and uniquely tell your story. Add anything that you participated in with a one to two sentence description. It's okay if it was a one-time thing, one-time project, as long as you present it that way. Um, we've learned from hiring managers that about half of them view volunteer experience and participation almost equally to formal work experience. So Participating in social impact work, community service, just sets you apart and finds common ground with others. So definitely list those causes that you care about. Skills and endorsements. So we want you to add skills to showcase your experience and what you can bring to the table. So again, skill searching is one of the top ways people conduct searches on LinkedIn. So in your skill section on your profile, you can actually list up to 50 different skills. Um, only the top three will show in your profile before the viewer needs to click in for more. So you can see here that there's three options here. If I click that show more, I would see everything this person has listed. So one note too, um, you know, and we talk about endorsements. So this is where, you know, other colleagues, customers, members of your network can endorse you. And oftentimes LinkedIn will prompt you to endorse someone if you're you know, for a skill if you're visiting their profile page. So if you feel inclined to do so and you can validate the endorsement, you know, from your experience with that person, go for it. However, don't do it just to do it and don't feel compelled if they've endorsed you for something that you have to endorse them. Um, but what I wanted to point out, you can see the numbers by these three skills. If you don't change this and have these three skills of whatever you want showing up, it will default to the top three skills that you've been endorsed for as the ones that show in your profile. So, um, you know, it's easy to change. You kind of just go in, uncheck, recheck. And I mean, I did something the other day that no one had endorsed me for, but I wanted to show um, on my profile. And what I also tell people too, when I look at some profiles, so many people have really similar skills listed. Don't waste the space where you've got like travel and then travel management and then travel negotiate, you know, something. Try to use the space, focus on soft skills, focus on any other technical skills or business skills. Don't put everything that's very similar, just uh, use this space to really highlight all of those great things. So something to think about uh, when you go back and look at your skill set. So recommendations, great way to build your professional credibility. It's perfectly okay to ask for them. So choose people who you've closely worked with, could provide examples of your strengths, validate your skill set. Super easy to navigate from your profile page. Um, and you can forward a link from that seg segment. And you know, if you're asking for a recommendation, you know, you just even a quick note to say, hey, I'm working on building out my profile. Would love if you could would consider adding a recommendation. Um, you know, also don't get overwhelmed uh, by this if someone asks to, you know, you to give a recommendation and don't think of it as a long letter of recommendation like the old days. It just has to be a few short sentences, what you liked about working with them, what you want to highlight, LinkedIn walks you through the steps and it's very, very simple. So if there's someone out there that you've enjoyed working with, a colleague, customer, vendor, whatever, give them a recommendation. Super easy. It will go a very long way. Um, and now is the time to help one another. So if you've never given one or received one, this segment of your profile won't be populated. So why don't you start out by uh, giving someone and then populate it, and then you can see where it says here you asked for 
a recommendation and LinkedIn really walks you through the steps. Super, super easy to do. It uh, doesn't take a long time. Allison, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know why we're so. Um, we did have a question on recommendations. Are you okay. able to change the order of the recommendations? I, I think you can, or you can definitely remove some that you've given. Uh, secret, I've done that. Or you can have some um, chosen uh, to show and not. It may default of most recent that shows, um, but move around. Usually you can kind of drag and drop some things as well. So it should be something you can do or at least maybe hide it and the other ones would pop up or something like that. Um, but you can also remove recommendations that you've given in the past too, if that's a consideration. Okay, thank you. And while I've stopped you, let yeah. me go ahead and give you the second question that came okay. in. Um, as it relates to the banner that you were mm -hmm. talking about on the profile, do you yep. have to be, do you have to have the premier subscription for that or is nope. that for anyone? Anyone. Okay. Anyone. And it's, uh, it's something like 15, 24 pixel by something, but don't worry about what it is. It's save it on your desktop. LinkedIn does try to resize it. I would just um, test something out. It is not a premium feature. It is for anyone to change um, their banner header. So try it out. Wonderful. Okay. Um, okay. Any more, Tim? Let's see. Are you, can you talk about recommendation versus endorsements? Yeah. So the difference would be an endorsement would just sort of, uh, you know, how those skills had those numbers by them. It's just a, you can see this person um, was endorsed for something and usually LinkedIn prompts you. So usually if I'm on somebody's page, uh, especially if they're in the event space, they'll, you know, ask for my endorsement. And then if I endorse them, see how it says, you know, basically LinkedIn's telling whoever's viewing this, hey, this Christine Woods, really high skilled in Microsoft Office. And the fact that she endorsed this person should have a little more weight. It's just, you're not really writing any detail. You're just sort of endorsing them. And that's how those numbers populate. A recommendation is a, a small written narrative, you know, a paragraph, a couple sentences where you're really uh, providing some unique examples of the work and uh, some detail of how you worked with this person. LinkedIn will say, were they a vendor? Were they a customer? Did they report to you? You know, same company, different company, kind of walks you through a few steps and then gives you a chance to write a short narrative. And then it goes back to the person. Uh, so you have control over it. If you say, oh, I don't really like the way that sounds. I'm not going to add that to my page. You don't have to. It's, uh, you have control over it. So uh, recommendation, definitely uh, more detail and an endorsement really kind of just a click, basically. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And just real quick before you go on, yeah. back to the banner picture. Um, yeah. I had a comment that they were not able, the, the person wasn't able to get it to upload. They're going to try a different browser, but is there, are there any tips or tricks with that? You know, try a different browser. Sometimes Chrome is more optimized uh, or you clear out your, your cache and your cookies. It's probably because the, the picture is too far of a different size. Um, I will look it up. It is like 1524 by something. I have it written down. It doesn't have to be exact, but it shouldn't be too far from it where LinkedIn can resize it and it's not going to uh, distort the image. So I think maybe try a couple different things. It is probably, could be the browser. Sometimes that's, that's a thing with people's computers. Otherwise, I would say your image is probably really off on the size that it needs to be. Okay, great. And, oh. and they, they did say that Firefox seems to be working. So. Okay, great, great. You're going to have a lot of, we're going to have a lot of updates on LinkedIn by the time. <laughs> Yay, the I hope day. so. Awesome. Everyone's <laughs> profile is going to be looking great. Um, yeah, so just a few more things on profile. If you have any new certifications and you, new education, learning, any publications, your program, your profile should really be dynamic. You know, you always want to update it with anything new any awards, any recognition, um, anything that you had, you always want to keep uh, adding to your profile, keeping it updated, uh, singing your praises. This is really your time to shine. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about our settings and privacy in just a second. Um, before I want to talk about our, what unique headlines are, 
So I get a lot of questions about this, and I really think people tend to overthink it. Um, adding a unique headline is really one of the most underutilized features on LinkedIn, but, and it really helps you sort of define your brand. And uh, you know, you can always change it. Your unique headline is in that top section under your photo and your name. And if you don't edit this, it will default to your current job title. So here are some examples I pulled from my network. So I'm sure you've seen people in on LinkedIn that have maybe have some unique um, you know, headline. You can see the list here. People approach it in many ways. Add something that feels right to you. Definitely a great way to show some personality and be your authentic self. And again, I say, don't be so formal on LinkedIn. Humor and creativity are always welcome. You know, it kind of uh, shows some personality. Like I said, if you don't edit it, it will default to your current job title. And one reason we like to say unique headlines, you know, is, is good to do when you're showing up in a search, whether it's uh, a page of search results, or maybe you've commented on something in the newsfeed or you're posting, the only thing that's gonna show up is a really small portion of your profile that's visible with typically your name, your photo, and your headline. So when there's something different and unique, you can bet those are the ones being clicked on first and you basically stand out from the crowd. So I encourage you to work on your unique headline. Again, try something out, change it later. You know, I change mine once in a while too. So always good to keep it dynamic. And I talked about the settings and privacy and I, I wanted to dig into this just a little more because I don't think many people have ever looked at this section in your account. Uh, you can see how to access this under your thumbnail photo at the top of your toolbar and click into it um, to get through this section. And you can see here, there's pages for account preference, security, visibility, ads, communication. So each page has a long list of what is housed under these headers. And LinkedIn is constantly adding you know, different things to make sure your data is safe and that you are showing up the, on the platform the way you want to. So there's some things that are de defaults that LinkedIn will choose for you, but make sure it's how you want it to be. So take 10 minutes, go through each page. This is where you can see the contact information you have showing. You can update a password. Um, you can edit how people view your profile publicly and privately. Uh, did you know you can create a custom URL for your profile and edit the one that LinkedIn assigned you when you first joined? So maybe it has like your name and, and letters and numbers. You can clean it up, make it a little more concise. Just as long as somebody doesn't already have that unique URL or maybe it's close and you add the number one or you put an underscore or hyphen. Um, so go check that out and make sure you include your LinkedIn URL. You know, you could put it on your resume. You could put it on an email signature. Um, you, if you're still using business cards, you can put it there. Uh, do you have multiple accounts you need to merge? This is also where you can do it. I know some people say, oh, I have a really old account. It does have some, you know, uh, connections, but I don't want to delete it. And so this is where you can do that. Um, you know, and you can adjust the setting so that your network isn't notified when you're making certain profile edits. I know that's one of an annoying feature of LinkedIn that most people don't like, so you can turn that off. Um, you really can adjust how LinkedIn communicates with you. Everything is at your fingertips. So please take some time to make sure uh, these settings are the way you want them to be. And one new feature that we just uh, did, we added that you could hibernate your account so you can see it here you know, maybe you're taking a little sabbatical or someone maybe on maternity, paternity leave and they don't want sort of the noise of LinkedIn or feel pressure that they have to answer messages or connection requests or anything. So it's basically a freeze of your account that you can just hibernate it for whatever amount of time and then sort of unhibernate it too. So uh, just an option to consider and that is a new feature from LinkedIn wanted to talk about a few more uh, new features um, related to your profile. So one is voice recording. So this is where uh, you can record the pronunciation of your name. So if you're like me, then you might be used to people mispronouncing your name, uh, but we're helping you to solve that by being able to record it the correct way you want it, you know, say and others. Uh, you do it in the mobile app super easy and um, you just go in edit mode and you hold it down, add it, and then it shows up on the app. You can see on this last image of the megaphone. 
where uh, you can listen to it in the mobile app, but also if someone's on desktop viewing your profile, uh, as long as their volume's up and you can click it and it um, says the correct pronunciation of, of their name. So if you have meetings with someone or someone you're not sure of, see if they've added this feature to their LinkedIn profile and it uh, is always super helpful. So another feature that we've said is uh, this open to work feature. Some of you already may be using this feature or seeing, seeing this on some of your network connections. So we already had an existing feature where you can signal to recruiters that you're open to new opportunities. That already existed and that was tied to LinkedIn's recruiter tool, uh, which was really only visible to recruiters. So, um, and it's again, <clears throat> something that you can choose. So a few months ago, we added this feature for you to decide if you wanted to let just recruiters know you were open or your entire network. So um, where you can see here that you have the choice of choosing share with all linked members or sh LinkedIn members or share with recruiters only. It's really up to you. It adds this photo frame, uh, this open to work around your image there. And I think it's a mixed opinion. I think it's, you know, have to determine what's right for you um, and what your goals are. And, uh, you know, I saw something this morning on LinkedIn that um, there's uh, some stats of how many more uh, recruiter contacts that people are getting uh, opening, using this open to work feature uh, than they were before, more messages, things like that. I know of some personal stories of people that in my network has said, wow, I used to work with this person, you know, 10 years ago plus, and I noticed that they had the open to work on their photo frame, didn't know this person was looking. I was able to connect them with an opportunity in my company and I, I you know, validated this person. So it, it is uh, helping people connect to opportunities. So it's whatever you're comfortable with. You know, we're constantly adding new features, improving our tools to make the platform more useful and valuable to our members. So another thing we added, LinkedIn Stories. This literally just came out. Uh, we had tested it in a few countries, but I think it's accessible to everyone today. So again, similar to other social platforms, more ways to connect. I think LinkedIn says, hey, this is sort of in place of those water cooler conversations where you can show what you're doing. It's 20 seconds of video or imagery, lasts for 24 hours, and this is from your mobile device. So one other feature I wanted to call out is uh, video calling. So this really just came out last week. Turn your chat into video chat. So it's integrated with Microsoft Teams, BlueJeans, or Zoom now, or you could, so if you're in a chat in the message feature on LinkedIn and you're having a conversation, you see this, uh, the video, and you could click on that and it opens up your account or it allows you to open account if you don't say have a Teams account, which is the example here. And it's really a seamless transition to move from a chat to a video call. You don't need their email like you would normally have to do to send them a meeting request. You could either do it right in that moment if they say, yeah, let's jump on a quick video call. Okay, great. Let me click this, click this. And then, you know, it, I tried this uh, the other day. It comes with a calendar says, it says either right now or you could schedule something in the future and then that, um, that meeting invite and that calendar invite goes into your uh, message stream there. So it's super convenient and it's just a seamless transition to move a chat to a video call when you don't need their email. So again, before we move on to the next section, uh, you know, talk about our network, I just really want to encourage each of you to spend some time making your profile something you are proud of. You know, it's your online reputation, an opportunity for people to learn about you, and at a minimum, I just want you to make it complete. So many people just have a profile to have one. They never add any detail or, you know, do anything with it. I know that's not how you want to show up to your community. So it's really step one on leveraging LinkedIn is really getting your profile complete and something you're proud of. So don't get overwhelmed with it. Commit 15 to 20 minutes a day to you have it in a place you feel good about. Super easy to edit. You know, uh, good practices to, you know, come back to it with a fresh pair of eyes. Maybe have somebody else take a look uh, just to get a, another opinion. So again, we want you to be authentic, make something creative, compelling, and also informative. So 
Moving on to your network, we've built a great profile. Uh, so I want you to think of your network as your inner circle. So do you have a philosophy and a strategy of who you let into your network? Um, I'd like you to think about it of quality versus quantity. And for most people, it's really the right approach. So once you add someone as a first connection, they have direct access to you, your information, and all, you know, also the rest of your network. So depending on what some of your settings are. So it's really important that you're thoughtful here. And I probably decline more inv invitations today than I accept, and that is okay. Uh, the other person is not going uh, to get a notification <laughs> from LinkedIn that I decline them. And most of the time it's someone trying to sell me something and they just aren't taking the right approach. So, um, you know, just be thoughtful about what your network looks like today and then as you're going to build it. So I am going to flip the script a little bit on you um, and share a concept that we talk, to, we talk about often at LinkedIn called the network gap. And you know, normally I would say uh, only add people who you know or you have some connection with, but now more than ever is really where this is important. There are people out there that need help, uh, may not have grown up in a place where there were role models or opportunity, maybe they didn't have access to better education, maybe they're living in an area or other country where they don't have the freedoms that we do in the U.S. And Again, normally I would say reconsider adding someone to your network that you don't know or have shared interests or connections with. However, if it's a student, it's someone just starting out or someone in an area where their situation is less fortunate and could use a boost, let's include them in our networks if they reach out or send an invitation to connect. So as they grow their network, it really changes the content they see in their newsfeed and the information and opportunities they have access to. So let's help who we can. Um, but I also want to talk about customizing your invitation. So it's really important to customize your invite with a short note. So one, again, this is my annoyance with LinkedIn, and I'm sure some of you too, depending on where you're sending the invitation from, either the mobile app or certain parts of the platform, it LinkedIn will automatically send the invitation without giving you an opportunity to customize it. I know that's that's a thing. So the the reason that um, you know it wants you to sort of add lots of connections and in, in your network uh, segment under your toolbar is where you'll see all these connections and it will automatically or potential connections and it will automatically send the invitation. So you can customize your invitation when you go to that person's profile. So you click on their profile and then you say connect LinkedIn. It will pop up a box to say, would you like to add a personal note? You say yes. Um, and then you just write one or two sentences, nothing long. It's, I think it's only 140 characters or something short anyway. You know, uh, if you don't know this person, say why you want to connect, how your connection might be, uh, you know, mutually beneficial. Potentially, it's someone that you recently met or that you're going to have a future meeting with. Looking forward to meeting you next week at this or our meeting coming up. Uh, in the meantime, would love to add you to my network. You know, something simple because when you customize your invitation, the other person is much more likely to accept you and add you to their network. So um, I listed the 500 number on here because that's where LinkedIn no longer continues to count your connections after 500. 500 publicly on your page. You can always see how many you have, but aim for 500 if you're not there already. It basically says, I'm an active member of my community and industry, and I'm a strong LinkedIn user. So one thing though, I wanted to say, you can also follow a person versus having to be a connection. So for example, I am not connected to LinkedIn's CEO, but I follow him so I can see all of the activity that he's doing, any posts, any engagement on the platform, that's more important than me having him uh, in my network. So um, I want you to think about that. So um, again, you can do that from their profile page. Uh, you can follow them. Some people may have a setting where they don't allow people to follow, but that's usually, on, I, not many people do, but it is an option if you want. So again, your network, your inner circle, Think about what you're posting, supporting each other, like and engage on other people's posts, stay in touch. And I say create a diverse network. And by that, I mean a variety of industries. Well, you know, different age groups, boomers, Gen Xers, millennials, Gen Z, 
really think about your network, you know, um, some best practices of strong LinkedIn users that actively nurture their network may pick five connections a week, reach out to them, comment on posts, check in just to stay in touch. Like previously over the last couple of years when I would give that example, I would say you never know when you might need their help. They could be working for a company you want to work for, someone that can introduce you to someone in their network. You know, now we are living in those times where our network is more important than ever to lean on. So moving forward, I just want you to give some extra thought on who you include in your network, as well as how you approach others when sending invitations to connect. So remember to stay in touch and constantly work on strengthening those relationships. And yes, it's really easy to remove connections if you decide like you go back through your list and you go, I don't even know who this person is. It's super easy to do. You can do it from their profile page or um, if you look at the My Network section or My Connections in your top toolbar, you click through that and you can uh, see all of your connections. You can either sort by first name, last name, or chronologically, which is would be the most recent that you've connected with. Uh, and you can, it's a quick unclick. They're not gonna get a notification that you remove them as a connection, just, just a thought. Wanted to share a quick hack. This is usually uh, more fun when we're all in person doing this together. But uh, this is just something that, you know, LinkedIn saying, hey, business cards are really obsolete. Um, you know, you can try this with someone in your household or a friend. Um, but if you're using the, the LinkedIn mobile app, this is super easy to connect. And uh, this is great because one day we will be back at trade shows and events and uh, different things like that where if you're talking to someone or you just met them, if you're like me, sometimes I'm like, oh my God, I just forgot what that person's name was, but I want to connect with them on LinkedIn. Or you're sitting there trying to spell their name and it's not coming up. So what you do, you both open up the LinkedIn mobile app. It's going to open to your newsfeed. You can see in that top search bar, um, you know, there's those four boxes. That's a QR code. So what you want to do is just tap on that. And then, uh, you know, it'll ask for access to your camera. You can either have the other person do the same thing. You can either scan the other code or you click on the code side, your code comes up and they can scan you and you just do it and it automatically brings up that person's um, LinkedIn profile. It doesn't connect you automatically, but you can just send a little uh, tap from there to connect with that person. It's super easy to do. And uh, I'm pretty sure the other person won't know about it and they're gonna think you have a super cool hack. Uh, but easy when you're like, I can't remember this person's first name or last name, it's a quick scan and uh, then you're automatically connected. All right, so we've you know talked about your profile, your network. Let's move on to your LinkedIn feed. Uh, talk a little bit about that. So primarily those in your network uh, and what they are doing is curating what your LinkedIn feed is. So all of our news feeds look completely different. So in addition to what your network's doing, make sure you follow influencers, uh, that content is relevant for you um, and what you're interested in so that your news feed keeps you interested in reading and learning and staying informed. Like part of your everyday practice, you sit down at your desk, open up your email, open up LinkedIn, you know, you could even keep it at the top of your browser and be in and out, you know, throughout the day. In addition to influencers and content, make sure you follow companies you're doing business with, companies you admire, companies you want to work for. I also tell people, make sure you're following your competitors. That's so important, you know. Companies post content, updates on their business, um, you know, everything you need to stay up to date. So join groups if you're not part of the um, Georgia BTA chapter, you make sure you want to follow uh, the group and join the group. Uh, you should also be following hashtags. So when people are um, providing content, whether it's something they auth authored or a post, they're going to add some hashtags to it and LinkedIn will really prompt you to do that. So, um, you know, it's good also when you're following a hashtag, you're going to see content from someone that's likely not in your um, network. So it just, again, curates your newsfeed. You can uh, use the search. You just go to the search bar, type in whatever you're looking for uh, to easily follow. For hashtags, you do want to put that pound sign, the hashtag sign in, and start typing it all in one word. So and then all these hashtags will start populating, and you'll be like, I'm going to follow this, I'm going to follow this. You know, it will just really guide you to the right content in your feed. So 
LinkedIn search has improved immensely over the years. So I think you'll, um, you, you know, you'll find it super easy to find a person, a company, content, influencers, anything that you're looking for. Um, you know, we just want you to customize your feed. We want you to communicate with us about what's relevant and what isn't, uh, what you want to see in your feed. You can see here, if you click on those three dots, you have control on, you know, of what this data uh, is. If you want to communicate with us, it goes right back to um, LinkedIn. So you can say, I like this, or this is not the right post for me. And then uh, it really just helps our overall algorithm. One thing I wanted to point out, so I have someone in my network uh, recently that I just unfollowed. This person was just sort of like posting and posting, I think just to, to post something every day, but it was resharing things, not adding any value or perspective. And it was frankly just sort of spamming my feed and my, um, my posts and everything. And I would just see something from this person. I'm like, not again, what, you know, nothing uh, valuable. So I unfollowed this person. You can unfollow them. It doesn't mean you're removing their connection. You're just basically sort of muting them in your feed so you're not seeing all that spam that you know you may have some of those people in your feed. So you can just unfollow that person's post right from a post and you won't see um, them again. You can always add it back. And again, they will not get notified that you are unfollowing them. It just sort of keeps some integrity in your feed. So. Let's talk a little bit about LinkedIn Learning. I wanted to highlight our learning platform since many of us have a little more time, uh, maybe to learn new skills, it's more important than ever. You know, LinkedIn has a learning platform to help people bridge the skills gap where technology and some jobs are just outpacing workers today. So instead of thinking you can never get this other job, another role, different company, or that you have to go back to school, just come here, up level, or learn new skills. So, you know, LinkedIn has over 16,000 courses. We are adding new courses every week. They fall under anything from business, creative technology, honestly, anything. I, something popped up today on my uh, feed about photography, finance, any kind of thing you want. Uh, I'm pretty sure that there is a course for it. Sometimes sessions are 30 minutes. Sometimes there's maybe five or 10 different classes in a longer learning path. You can follow a learning path. You can see what's trending. Um, you know, if you pick one uh, topic, there'll be others that sort of support that same topic. Um, you can, once you complete the course, you have the choice to add it to your LinkedIn profile. And LinkedIn, again, will validate that you've taken that course. So uh, great, so much learning opportunity. And, you know, when everything started where people were working from home, LinkedIn really unlocked lots of courses for free on, you know, working from home tips, job searching tips, virtual interviewing. So there's many uh, courses that are probably available to you that you might not know about. But if you do have a premium subscription, um, all of this learning, unlimited access to LinkedIn learning is part of your uh, premium subscription. So I just am talking a little bit about premium subscriptions because I get asked a lot about the difference of a premium membership versus a regular membership. So I just wanted to highlight a couple of the features uh, that when you have a premium subscription at LinkedIn, this is not a sales pitch by any means. So um, again, there's four tiers. The basic one, I think it's $30 a month, is what you need for if you're a job searcher or to access all of that LinkedIn learning. You just get more in-mails, you get deeper into the data, you can see who's viewed your profile, you can be completely anonymous. So all of these settings are in that settings and privacy section we talked about. So when you're premium, you have a few options. You can view unlimited anonymously. Um, with job insights, this is an area that I find super interesting that, um, and again, everything that LinkedIn is communicating with me about or what it thinks I want to see or learn or think I'm, you know, a good fit for a job. It's really based on what my profile content is. Everything I have in my profile is really how LinkedIn decides what jobs to put at me, you know. So, um, you know, if I'm uh, looking at a job and it says I would likely be uh, a good candidate for this, maybe I'm in the top 10%, in the top 25%, it shows me how many applicants there are shows me who from my current company now works there. Alumni from the university I went to also highlights who in my network 
is one of you know, my first connections that might be employed there, which in turn should signal me to reach out to that person uh, you know, if I wanted to learn more about the role or the company. So LinkedIn's really trying to help you with all of this extra insight, uh, you know, connect you to opportunities. So again, lots of great things coming from uh, LinkedIn Premium. You know, for me, it's the, the biggest thing is that LinkedIn learning. Um, one thing, I put this out of office thing that's new. I don't know if it's public yet to people. So as an employee, we're in constant beta mode. So a lot of times what I'm seeing on my app or the profile on the platform, it's different than what's public. So the other day I noticed it said, hey, try out, uh, you know, set an alert that you're out of the office. So it's basically like what you can do in Outlook or for your email, setting that out of office alert, which many people I know have been asking for um, because people are doing so much messaging and communicating on LinkedIn, but you're like, hey, I'm on vacation this week. And you know, you don't wanna feel like you're ignoring people or that you have to keep checking your uh, LinkedIn uh, messages. So if that's not already open to everybody with premium, it's coming soon, uh, just a little sneak peek. So. The other thing, you can try a premium for a month and see if it's for you, if you're finding value in it. I know you do have to uh, put a credit card in, but you can like cancel it the day before if you're like, eh, not going to do it. Or you're like, oh my gosh, this month has been great. I'm totally finding value in it. Um, if you've already used that free month before, some of us may have in the past, you just need that 12 month gap in between in order to do another month for free. So just something to consider. So we built a great profile. We've talked about your network, how to curate content in your feed. Let's talk a little bit more about engaging on LinkedIn and putting content out there. So some of you may already be super comfortable posting on LinkedIn, even maybe publishing some longer form articles and that's great. So let's, let's just discuss this a little bit further. This is where you start really uh, you know, developing a voice, enhancing your brand on LinkedIn. Um, you know, there's essentially two categories that you're, you're, you'd fall into if you're posting. So an update or a post, I would say 85% is what you're seeing on LinkedIn. And then you could publish an article where you're just um, digging into a topic a little bit more that you have authored. So an update or a post could be any, like you're sharing a link, you're resharing an article, a quote, some images of something maybe with your colleagues, you're putting a poll out there, polls are new this year. If you've seen those, you're just kind of getting a pulse on what your network's caring about. Um, you know, and then publishing, you're just digging into a topic and uh, you're writing your perspective. So let's see a few best practices on posts. Um, you know, feel, you know, do what feels right for you. Some people are like, how often should I be posting? You know, it's really, you know, if you haven't started or are doing anything, maybe you set a little goal, maybe once a month, maybe once a week, or, you know, I kind of, sometimes I do it three times a week. Sometimes I don't do it for three months. So it just sort of depends on, you know, what's on my mind, what I'm seeing out there. Maybe I like an article from a different platform, a news feed, uh, or something that I've, oh, I really like this article. I'm going to share it with my network because I think you know, knowing my network, this might be valuable to them. So if you're on another platform, you can share an article you see sometimes, whether it's Twitter logo, Facebook logo, or LinkedIn logo, it's literally a one click. Where you click that and that article imports right over to the LinkedIn platform. You have an opportunity to add a little message saying, hey, I really found this article valuable. I'm just going to share it with you, blah, 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 something. Again, anytime you're posting, um, you want to add, you know, those hashtags. Uh, we again talked about rich media, a photo, a video. If you're doing any video on LinkedIn, keep it short. I would say 30 seconds or less for video. Otherwise, people won't watch the whole thing. People are scrolling quickly through everything. If you want somebody to know that you've mentioned them in your post, make sure you at mention them with their name. And uh, again, remember we talked about hashtags. So um, adding multiple hashtags. Again, LinkedIn prompts you based on the content of what you're posting, or you could kind of add your own or search your own. And the hashtags, again, if you're following certain hashtags as of content of information, that post is going to show up in somebody else's feed, and it really extends the life of your post versus just somebody's link that they're scrolling through in like 10 seconds. So um, that's kind of just about 
a, a general update or post, but if you're publishing, you know, it's where you write unique content, you author it, and you dig into a topic a little deeper than you would on a post. So this is also an area where I, pe I think people tend to overthink it a little bit when writing something a little more long form, you know, just focus on one idea that you're passionate about, you have a strong point of view, share some insights, your perspective on. Um, I bet you could look in your newsfeed right now and see who might be publishing an article versus just a post and you should be able to tell the difference if they've added something. You can see if the source is them themselves, that they have authored it or maybe Forbes.com or something else that they're sharing. And LinkedIn's really good too about if you're, you know, as a user scrolling through, it'll say this is a one minute read, a two minute read, a three minute read, just to give you a, a chance to say, do I have time to read that now? Or maybe I'll bookmark it and come back to, to it later, you know, and when you're doing an article, you know, the, the length does matter. We suggest 500 to 1000 words um, and no longer because it will be, you'll have less viewers on it. So one cool thing about, um, you know, whether you're posting or publishing is tracking your progress. So insights are really important for us at LinkedIn and um, it might encourage you to do more. So what's cool about this, you can see this particular post, um, it had 1,156 views, 112 people reshared it. So whatever it was, other people that saw it, uh, reshared it. You can dig into this, you see what companies they were from, what their titles were, what their locations were, um, you know, so it's really interesting to see these stats. One thing I think is really interesting is that it shows at the bottom, the most clicks came from your second degree network. So say that I publish something and um, Kim uh, maybe liked it or something. And so it showed in her newsfeed that she liked my post because it was activity that she was doing or maybe it commented on something, which then maybe alerted someone in her network because they're seeing her feed that I'm not connected to to click into that. So that would be a second connection to me. And if that person did something, then, you know, in their own newsfeed, then that's a third connection to me. So that's how that first, second, third degrees work. But I found it super interesting that most of the clicks from this particular example came from somebody's second degree network versus their, their first connection. So you can see, you know, things can go viral when you, um, you know, just share, share it with everyone. Um, so my challenge to you once you get your profile looking great, if it's not already, is to start engaging more in the platform with posts, reshares, writing articles, set a goal for yourself. And like anything, uh, you have to continue to do something for it to become a habit. So I guarantee you will find so much value uh, and, and engagement with others, people maybe that you've never thought about uh, connecting with will reach out to you or maybe want to connect with you um, in your network. So it really goes a long way. So uh, now I wanted to talk about, as I mentioned, some job searching uh, tips and, you know, many of you may be looking right now or know someone that could use some help. So, you know, first and foremost, um, you need your profile up to date. Focus on transferable skills, focus on all of your skills projects. Just make sure your profile is complete, something that you're proud of. Stay connected online, whether that's with your own network, whether it's with LinkedIn, whether it's with other platforms, just, just stay engaged, you know. We also talked about the LinkedIn learning platform. This isn't a time where, hey, maybe there's some skills that you could brush up on, you know, uh, or you feel that you're not skilled in certain areas, so maybe you're not qualified for certain things. You know, I always want you to focus on the skills that you do have and not what you don't, but this is also an opportunity to um, you know, take some of those LinkedIn learning courses, add them to your profile so you feel that you have enough knowledge about them if you are applying for certain jobs. So one thing really, really important for job searchers is setting a job alert. So in the jobs section up at the top of your toolbar, when you dig into jobs, you can set alerts and you can set as many alerts as you want. You can um, put some criteria where you're looking for, maybe it's um, an account manager title, maybe it's in a certain location in this area, you can also put remote as a location for alerts, or maybe you're looking for something with a specific company or industry. 
So we say to set job alerts, and again, set as many as you want, because when that alert comes to you and says, you know, I got something the other day, it was like, Allison, this, I had an old job alert for something, you know, so-and-so um, just posted this particular job that I had an alert criteria. So really what that, what LinkedIn wants you to do, you need to apply for that job, <coughs> excuse me, right when you get that alert, not like two days from now, within the first 10 minutes. So really important because that first wave of applicants is really going to be who gets noticed from that hiring manager or recruiter. So set as many job alerts as you can. You know, we talked about that open to work option, whether you're just signaling to recruiters or all of your network that you're open to opportunities. Um, you know, think about that if that's something you wanna do. Also in that jobs page, if you see interview prep, you can click into that and it has more. There, you know, some of us may have not been interviewing for years and years, right? And you're like, I don't know the first thing of what someone's gonna ask me. So we have a list of commonly asked interview questions and sample answers that you can see. <coughs> Excuse me, let me just take a quick sip of water. One new feature we have is an artificial intelligence powered tool where say you're looking at these commonly asked questions, you can record an answer, you can uh, send it to this AI resource tool um, of your recorded answer to get feedback. Were you saying, you know, were you talking too slow? Did you use too many filler words? You can get feedback or if you don't want to work with the AI tool, you can still do that recording and forward um, that to someone in a private message in your network to get feedback. Um, the other thing, if you do have a premium feature, so you'll see these commonly asked interview questions in the jobs tool. And then uh, you'll, if you're a premium member, you'll see a video of someone that answers the question in the context that that particular hiring manager was looking for. So it gives you a little bit of extra support uh, and some of these, but I encourage you to really poke around all areas of LinkedIn. You can't mess things up. I find new things all the time that I didn't even know existed, but this job area is somewhere where we're really working on, really wanting you to, um, you know, get some tools, get some resources. Uh, one thing you'll see that's called easy apply. So if you see a job post, again, lots of job postings on LinkedIn. It is the uh, decision of that job poster of how they, they show their job on LinkedIn. So if you see something called easy apply next to a job, what that means is that you can apply to that job with your LinkedIn profile. You don't have to send your resume separately. Again, why it's so, so important that your profile is looking great. You wouldn't want to easy apply to someone or send your profile uh, without it being up to date or complete. And also, even if you are sending your resume somewhere, your recruiters are looking at your profile. So that's sort of their, their first stop. Um, oftentimes too, the job may just direct you outside of the LinkedIn platform over to their applicant tracking system or their company website. And that's where they want you to apply for the job, but you're just kind of getting that, um, you know, that pathway from LinkedIn and it's just there for you to see. Oftentimes some people ask, hey, I applied for this job, but LinkedIn doesn't show that I applied for it. It's likely because the uh, job poster just have you, you know, navigate over to their website and they're not really putting updates on LinkedIn, whether this job is still open or some people say it looks open, but they're not accepting anything. It's just because that owner of that job is not doing a great job um, providing updates. So again, you know, we talked about those hashtags to follow where you're, you know, curating content in your feed. But if you're job searching, I would follow those ones that you see here because so many people that are posting jobs add these types of hashtags. Uh, also on LinkedIn's homepage in the top corner, uh, we have a hyperlink of all the jobs uh, companies that are immediately hiring and that's updated constantly by our editorial team. So we really wanna help you, um, you know, uh, do your best to navigate this difficult job market right now. So definitely look around at these tools. So, you know, we're in it together. As I've talked about LinkedIn, a great community of people in your network, others uh, that you may not be connected to, but willing to help. We talked about racking your profile, everything you need to do to get your profile looking great. 
talked about leveraging your network, your strategy behind it, really thinking about your inner circle. We talked about customizing your new news feed, learning new skills, sharing your voice by, by posting or publishing articles, uh, really taking advantage of our job, job searching tools. So I hope you're all feeling comfortable uh, or more comfortable using LinkedIn and happy to answer any questions. Gosh, thanks, uh, Allison. That was awesome. Uh, we do have a <laughs> couple of questions that have okay. come in. So the first one is, is the resume tip builder only available to the paid version of the job hunter? Um, uh, I, I don't think it is. Um, so there's a, a resume builder um, and there's might be a two, a couple versions where you can just click uh, from your profile to build a resume. And basically what it does is just populates sort of it into a PDF, like it translates your profile, but you could also edit that. I think with the premium feature, there's a few more uh, customization tools that you can do. And the difference in the jobs area, like I said too, with premium is um, adding those videos of people showing those sample uh, answers to those commonly asked interview questions. So there's always going to be a little more that premium offers you than just a standard um, membership. Okay, and the second part of that question, uh, do the suggested words that appear on that page directly correlate to the algorithmic search in the main screen? Suggested words, meaning like someone suggesting words for your profile or are you saying i'm not sure of the context so you know some people do say how do i beat the algorithm or or whatever you know and like anything if you're applying for a job you know make sure how they do word things or certain skills or that they want to highlight make some make sure some of that is you know matching up to your profile or you know if you're submitting a resume so you may have to do some customization so, you know, the thing with the algorithm, it's LinkedIn, um, again, looks at what your profile is. It looks at your activity. So I noticed too, if I click into a job that whether it's something I'm serious about or looking at or not, I, then it will kind of um, sort of bookmark that activity. And then I noticed that they go, this job that you looked at uh, the other day, these other three jobs are really similar to it. So it might be something you're interested in or, Potentially, if I read some content that might push different content similar, something like that. So really, you know, it's about um, what you have in your profile to kind of your activity and your behavior on LinkedIn on uh, really how the algorithm is going to push different content to you, if that makes sense. Okay, I think I think that does. Um... Mark, if you have other, if you want clarification on your question, feel free to unmute and chime in. Okay, we'll move on to the next question. And okay. um, after I finish this one, if anyone else has a question that you just want to unmute and ask Allison directly, feel free. Um, this next question, Allison, are you able to turn off your likes for everyone to see? If you, so, so for example, if you only want the person who posted it to see, not all of your connections, is that a possibility? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, I've never been asked that. I've never looked into it, but the, I will, I can look it, into it, but the place where it might be an option to turn that off would be that settings and privacy um, section that I talked about because there's tons and tons of different ways to you know, hide certain data, only show certain data. So that would be um, that, but that's interesting. So you wouldn't want others to see your likes for your post. Okay. <laughs> that was my question. That was my question, Allison. And the reason is I like a lot of stuff, but I don't want to bore like my 4,000 followers. Oh, you're, my saying, you're saying the ones that you like. So yes. So yeah. um, when I said that there's uh, one of those features in the settings and privacy um, where it says not notify your network of your activity, you know, some of that may fall under whether you liked something or not. Um, and LinkedIn doesn't put every single thing that you're doing in your network's feed. It may just be to that 
depending on the competing network, you know, um, activity of other people, it's only going to see a little bit. But I understand now your question of, you know, if you, you know, sometimes I think that too. I'm like, oh, I'm going through, and I'm liking like 40 things. Will it show up? It'll show up on your profile because it will show up all of your activity for a certain while. But it doesn't necessarily always show up. 100% of your activity in your network feeds. They may, the algorithm may just pick a couple things, but definitely go back to that settings and privacy where it says, don't, you know, notify my network and then just unhide it um, because that's with certain activity, it, it will notify your network. Great, thanks. Any other questions? Okay, um, I'll, I'll, pause for just a, a couple of seconds to see if there are any other questions. And people can always reach out to me directly, happy to answer any questions if someone didn't want to ask anything or if something comes up later, uh, just message me on LinkedIn. Great way to do it. So <laughs> speaking of that, um, <clears throat> we will have this presentation posted. Um, on our uh, Georgia BTA site. And this has also been recorded excuse me, and we will have the recording on uh, YouTube shortly once that's um, completed. So usually um, within the week, I would say. So Allison, I just want to personally thank you for investing the time and the energy and the enthusiasm in our chapter. And I also um, want to let everyone know that not only did um, Allison dedicate and give generously of her time, but link, she, on behalf of LinkedIn, has also donate, donated a six-month premium subscription for the, um, the GBTA Georgia chapter auction, which has uh, been rescheduled for December. So that's something that you can tell by everything that she talked about. That's going to be an awesome um, item that we will have in the auction. So thank you for that as well, Allison. My pleasure. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Dwight. Alrighty. Thank you very much, Allison. What a wonderful way to uh, close out Education Month. Uh, I know it's being one that's LinkedIn challenged. And I think when we spoke a couple of days ago on the prep call, I felt I was quite embarrassed to admit that I hadn't touched LinkedIn in, in, <laughs> in a minute. Uh, so this was great for me and, and hopefully I will get, be able to get uh, uh, my LinkedIn profile looking LinkedIn ready and in no time at all. Uh, I also wanted to thank Kim Kearns, our director of our uh, education speakers. Kim, you have done a phenomenal job this past month. This has been the first time we've done a full month of educational sessions. It will not be the last time we do this. Yeah, uh, you've oh, just no. done, you just, <laughs> you just rocked it out. Uh, and I cannot, and, and I must thank BCD Travel again for sponsoring Education Month for us. It's been uh, an amazing month of activity and education. Um, since we do have a few minutes, I wanted to touch on a couple of things. As Kim mentioned, um, our auction that was scheduled for this month, we made the decision to push that off to Dece December. I think it's actually going to be a better uh, move and a better fit for us. So look for more details on that to come. Um, our next meeting is actually going to be uh, October 20th at 3 p.m. And we're excited to have Heather Pastrick. I know most of you know Heather Pastrick, past president of uh, George BTA. Uh, and she will speak to us on uh, the, the, the effects of COVID on the car rental industry. We've had airline speakers come in and speak to us on this topic before. We're excited to have Heather come in and speak to us on how that is affecting the car rental industry. I also want to remind you, as always, to complete your surveys that you're going to get once uh, the, the, this program completes, and to make sure you check out our LinkedIn and our Facebook profiles. Uh, with that, I will go ahead and wrap it for today, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on the 20th. Again, thank you for joining us today.